So in addition to motivating, it sounds like um, one of the, the big challenges is we, we have all this definition like of success, even uh, for us as parents, like we start yeah. off going, oh, my child should be performing so much better in school, perhaps than we think that they, I don't, I don't know what the baseline <laughs> is, but really when it comes to this, it's like, how do we reframe what success is, especially now during like when the midst of a pandemic, you know, people are still locked down. Like, what does success look like? We have no idea. We we don't even see other other students. What would you su so, suggest? This one is a, a huge topic um, for me, and I can share a little personal um, story. Even since the pandemic, I've had to reframe what does success in my business look like right now. Um, what does it really mean to me? And even as adults, for me, I spiraled into such a deep depression, feeling like I had to live up to what I thought the idea of success of my business looked like. Instead of saying, wow, I've impacted five families' lives this month, I was thinking, oh, I don't have this amount in my bank account, and that's what success was. So I've even had to reframe, is success a financial thing for me? Or is it an impact thing? Or is it both? And really defining what that means. And I think as parents, we have to be very conscious of what our own personal success story, success definition means. Because it's very easy to impose that on others and or children. Now... <laughs> A lot that is of that is okay. Uh, if I can interrupt, like that is super yeah, powerful. Um, yeah. Because for for us, like we all think that we should be doing more. We should be achieving yeah. more. And I think that for us, saying that, you know, really asking, kind of what we did before, like the why are we doing this, and like are we really trying to achieve this? Like, is that Let's say we yeah. had that, you know, are we going to be that much happier because of it? Um, are we going to like, what was the point of all, all of this stuff that I'm doing? Was it so that my kid could get the best grades? Could it, was it so mm -hmm. I can get a lot of money? Um, or maybe it was something that is, is even more, more important, more valuable to me. It's like, mm -hmm. I just want to build that relationship with a few people. Um, I remember <laughs> speaking, um, I, like I, some of the things I say to people is often if you want to, to have a lot of knowledge, you, you like school is a great place for knowledge. But if you want to have wisdom, like attend funerals and see what people say about the person who, who passed. They, yeah. They're often not talking about how much money they earned. They're not talking right. about how much work that they did. But they're, they're saying that one or two things, that one moment where you made them feel that they were capable of doing something that they never thought they were capable. It, it, people don't talk about like what you did. They talked about how you made them feel. Yeah. All it the seems time. like such a weird thing, but they, they care about the, how you make them feel. Right. That's the thing that lasts a long time, like that lasts longer than your lifetime. So if you're interested in investing in things that are beyond your lifetime, then look at like, how do you make people feel? That seems to be like much more in tune with what they are looking for. Brittany, sure. um, like your, your perspective on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, I'm in total agreement with that analogy. And it's just so important that we are in touch with that mindset in ourselves um, as parents um, because it directly impacts our students. So I have spoken to so many parents that say, well, not all great um, straight A's, so why aren't they, you know? So even that kind of language we have to be very conscious of because you're not really taking the time to check yourself. Like my experience and my, my mental mindset at that age could have been very different. We also had very different distractions compared to our children. So I think that being very clear, so even for my school that I started, during um, an interview session, every parent is interviewed and I ask them, who do you want your child to be? When you think of Tom in 25 years, who is that man or woman? And what are they contributing to the world? And, and when you think of the type of person they are, if you were writing their eulogy, 
as you point out, you know, what is it that you want to say about this child? So we start from there in our interview and say, okay, well, these are the things that need to happen in their overall life experiences for us to get there. It's not about the A's and the B's and which high school they end up going to, or in, in the US or, the, or in Canada, it's probably about which university they get into um, that defines their identity and who they'll become. But what are life experiences that you as a family are willing to provide for this child? as well as at school, do, they, do you want them to be at a school that challenges them and inquire, you know, causes them to think beyond just what's in a textbook, but really ask difficult questions about, you know, how can I solve this problem? Is that the child you want? So these are very real conversations that help to define success um, and who, who you want to see reflected in your generations to come. You know what I mean? These are very deep reflections that i ask families to really take some time even if you're going to go on a little family retreat and really give it some thought it's not something that you want to define just on a whim you know like for me 100 uh, percent. i mean yeah. these are deep, deep <laughs> like questions but i also feel like there are questions that are not asked enough like if anything people need to be asking these questions more often to go what do they want their eulogy to look like and maybe even their child's eulogy to look yeah. like I think those are good questions to go like maybe it didn't matter that much that they were right. even successful that's successful it's at school and mm -hmm. these particular academics were not the thing that really changed them because you think about like all of the stuff that you learn in school and you're like oh but how much of it do you really use and let's think about like now how quickly things are changing in the world of work how much is that going to matter right yeah. that they they yeah. really aced all those tests it's like you know what the, like what they taught you for could be a world that no longer exists by the time they graduate. And like so many people are moving to different types of work now. So yeah, absolutely, yeah, I agree I, with you. I'm not gonna say it's easy. Yeah, it's, um, but even for me with a three-year-old, I have a little pot at home with um, a few kids. And you know, m even though before when I was pregnant, my husband and I decided we were gonna go on a retreat and we were gonna write out who do we want our son to be. We did this whole, thing right so we we created what our family values are going to be having a child and which is why i even started saying to you it's it's more motivation now for a child is about the intentionality of it as parents we have to be intentional right so we decided you know we want to raise our son to you know ask questions and be um an inquirer and problem solve so even in our language we've had to retrain ourselves to speak a different way at home to get that kind of result so it's very easy for me to say when i look at him in his pod to be like wow he doesn't know his alphabet like everybody else yet however my son knows how to ask mommy why is this happening can you explain it to me and he's three so I have to celebrate that instead of focusing on what everybody else is doing. And it's it's not easy. Even as an educator, I find myself still saying, oh my gosh, honey, he, he doesn't know his numbers yet. And I'm freaking out because, you know, it's just so easy to fall back into that. So because we met up and we decided these were the values we were going to do, my husband is quick to say, that's not the right language to get that out of him. Or let's not say you're naughty, but that behavior that you did really made mommy feel angry can we change that behavior so it's just a constant like once you know what your intention is of who you want that child to become you always have to be checking yourself because you're you still have your experiences of success on you that you are putting on them but you also have to be conscious of wow i this this is not what i really wanted for them so you always have to be doing that self-correction um and also putting in the forefront what am i trying to achieve here instead of getting distracted. That was a lot I feel like I threw out. <laughs> There's something huge there though. I think like this, um, we gotta celebrate our, our child's unique mm -hmm. successes and they're not gonna be the same as everyone else's. And rather than them, like you're trying to see how they perform against some standard that has been developed, yeah. which is kind of assuming the average child or something. And it's like, that's not gonna be your child. Like you're yeah. not, your child is not average. Yeah. Uh, they are extraordinary in some areas, and it's important to recognize those. Even yeah. for my my own son who has ADHD, um, he's going to be behind in some areas. Could be reading, could be writing, um, and that's okay. I know it's, it's okay. going to be okay because I went through a lot of those things myself as a child. 
Um, and it was being able to leverage that unique skill, that unique talent, um, be it like creativity or mm -hmm. be it like your like the curiosity, as you had mentioned, mm -hmm. um, and being able to, that can turn into a career right there. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. To onto the table with that yeah. skill alone. And so if our definition of success is how they perform against a common a standard. standard for mm -hmm. everyone, we are always going to be disappointed exactly. in what's happening versus if we are always going and focusing on what they do well mm -hmm. and thinking about what would be the next step for them, a different roadmap. Like we create a roadmap that is success for them mm -hmm. versus a roadmap that is success for every student. Exactly. Then we have a much better chance of, uh, it sounds like, of reframing uh, what success means. And is, that what, said, is that what you're getting at? That's in terms exactly of what I'm getting at. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm getting at. It's, you know, it's it goes to my final, one of my biggest things is, other than communication, autonomy, and competence, is relatability. Like, how are we relating to our children, understanding who they are, and creating an environment for them to thrive? I mean, I remember I heard a parent say to me, I turned out fine. They can go to a regular traditional school that doesn't really challenge them in any way because I'm fine, they're fine. And to me, that spoke to volumes to me about one, that parent is not spending time reflecting on the world that their child is growing up in. Um, they also don't want to think beyond who their child can become. Like we are, we can't play God. <laughs> we, we don't know what's going to happen to these kids. In We don't even know what's going to happen to our lives next week. So we have to equip them with the skills to be able to thrive no matter what comes at them. No matter, you know, it's about being resilient. It's about being able to ask the right questions and solve real problems. I mean, here in the Caribbean, we are at great risk of, you know, flooding, especially with climate change. Are we having these conversations with our children about what's going to happen if this happens and how can we solve this and work together to to advocate as young people and know that we have power in our voice and in our actions like this is the kind of child I want to raise you know so um being very conscious of that um will guide your decisions about what school your child goes to um what kind of after school activities you take them to what kind of conversations you have at home you know it, it you have to be very conscious I think as parents we have to just ramp up or reflection ramp up how we see the world and and how we want our children to interpret these things and have very real conversations this expectation of oh they can just go on TikTok and they're going to learn they're going to learn a whole load of things that you you weren't even ready to have a conversation about so you need to even start building those relationships at home so that you can have real conversations with your kids and and that's big that the whole parent child open communication is very big for or modern child. Uh, I love this because this is uh, something that we talk a lot about when it comes to like we say like don't sedate relate to create and so mm -hmm. this having those conversations ultimately leads to creation and I've often connected like uh, creation with disruption mm -hmm. because when you get like a single person involved or maybe a small like your family members and then maybe your your community um, and then eventually you can you can get to like your your city or the mm. place that you live, even to a nation. You start creating these movements, uh, and that's like really the the core essence of creativity is it, it is a disruption of the status quo. And you'd be very yeah. proud of your child if they were doing those kind of things, saying like, no, we can't do things the way that we've done so far. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have all these problems with climate change, and I don't want to yeah. live in this future where we've got all these problems. I think that that's a powerful, like a powerful, powerful statement. And so uh, it, it's building that critical thinking mm -hmm. just in, just look at your world, <laughs> like just yeah. having those conversations with them, treating right. them like an adult yeah. from the begin with. And just to say like, well, what would you like to see? Exactly. Um, let's have those conversations. So, yeah. hmm. so does that mean like some of our conversations that we had before are like one of the ways that we, we reframe success is to, yes, we need to tailor it. Like we need to like mm -hmm. motivate them by tailoring it. But it sounds like we also need to reframe success by looking at their own unique roadmap, but also looking at, well, asking the question of the roadmap of where you want them to go. Like you, you talked about like the, mm -hmm. the citizen, the, mm -hmm. the kind of person, the, the eulogy that 
you yeah. might write for them. Um, that I thought was very that was very powerful, uh, Brittany. So, am I summarizing this correctly? Am, am I on the right yeah, track? You're, you're a student. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked a lot I, of questions. They're curious. Yeah. <laughs> just like your son. Yeah, I think that um yeah. and and you know it's really easy to to kill a child's creativity. Sir Ken Robinson spoke about this a lot. Like even with them being very, you know, being a curious mind and challenging things or breaking it down, it's very easy, especially for like type A personality parents like like, stop doing that, like put it back. Or, you know, really, if you let go a little bit, you'll start to see who your child really is. How is their mind working? And you, you know, it, it, it might feel a little painful to you, but I think as parents, we have to get comfortable with just being stretched. We are being stretched every day. And um, we just have to be conscious about like trying to navigate who our kids are so that we can be their very best advocates creating that roadmap for them and and that roadmap is going to be changing all the time because they're living breathing creatures who are evolving so don't get stuck on oh i want them to be a world changer yeah but that that also has to be in alignment with their personality and who they are because a world changer may need to be a very, you know, confident Barack Obama type of person and your child may be the kind of person that just kind of wants to sit in their room and read comics. How are we going to make that work? That could mean like, can we look at how are you going to write anonymous papers or anonymous editorials for the newspaper and have a voice? You know, it can look like so many different ways. So let's get comfortable with being uncomfortable with who our kids are. I love that. Yeah, like we need to get um, that level of comfort with being stretched every day, but also being uncomfortable because that's what it is. Like, especially when they're, they're being creative, they're, um, what have I heard? I've heard the phrase embrace the chaos, you know, cause yeah. it's going to be chaos, uh, when they yeah. start getting creative. And so, yeah, the, these are, these are all things that are, are very important. 